Now, if you remember, we told you not to cut off the bottom of these ribs and then we would show you later how to shape the bottom of them. Well, this is later. So we're gonna show you how. And you can just lay it out on the floor and mark how to shape the bottom, but I think it's easiest just to have someone hold the top of the rib at the proper dome height. 48 inches, right? Yeah, 48, that's good. Man, he's good help. Now I'm gonna show you how to scribe this to match the floor. And if you remember, this is the mark where we measured our length of the rib down here. Now I'm gonna show you how to mark the bottom of this parallel to the floor. And you could just take a compass and mark it on the bottom here. But I'm gonna take this block of wood, just lay it there, and I'll give you a level line. And you're not going to cut it on that line, but instead you're going to fold it back on that line. That'll give you a tab that you can screw to the tension ring on the bottom. Okay, now you got your tab, and that's going to fit flat in the bottom of the tension ring. To get an accurate cut on the top end of your rib, hold the rib at the proper height, in this case 48 inches. Now we're going to mark a plumb mark at the top, the level, and that's where you're going to cut it. Now this will allow your rib to fit flush into your compression ring, and you'll need to cut all the rest of your ribs at this same angle at the top of the rib. Now your ribs are going to fit here inside the tension ring, but first you need to lay them out, the spacing around the bottom of the dome on the tension ring. And normally I would take a gauge block to mark it, but I had this strap that was left over from the tails of the flexi track that we cut off for the ribs. So I cut it to 15 and a half inches, which is what our printout gave us from the computer. So I'm gonna mark it every 15 and a half inches. Now you're ready to assemble your masterpiece. With your helper, you need to assemble three ribs into the tension ring on the layout then at the top we're going to put them in the compression ring we're going to clamp them in place and we'll put this one on layout here This one on layout also. And now this will start to define your dome for you. Now we have the rib here in the tension ring and I'm gonna knock down the edge of the tension ring here so it'll be easier to screw to your rib. I've clamped it, now I'm gonna put a screw in it. Now just install the rest of the 27 ribs and you're almost done. Be sure to install the ribs on layout. You'll probably want to go around the ring and mark the layout right, left, right, left, all the way around to be sure you get the correct rib on the correct mark. Be sure to install them evenly around the dome so you even out the load as you build it. Install screws into the ribs through the top and bottom flanges of the compression ring. And when you install your screws up through the tension ring into the bottom of the tab on this rib that you've created, be sure that your rib is plumb and not twisted to one side or the other before you install your screws. Now before you put sheathing on the dome, you need to be sure that all the ribs stay plumb and in place. So just to make it easier, I'm gonna take some strap, lay it flat across the dome. We're gonna screw it to each rib just to hold them in place. These same methods can be used to build domes of different sizes. Just plug your numbers into the spreadsheet and it'll tell you what you need. I hope this helps. 
Let us know how it works for you. And if you have any photos of your dome building experiences, we'd love to see them. Just send them to us here at Flexibility Concepts, the curved wall people. And now, the dome people.